Hi, welcome back. And uh, this is the second of uh, two linked videos. In the previous video, I talked about the things that I'm looking forward to in Gran Turismo 7, based on the information we have and what we've seen so far. In this video, I want to talk about the things that I'm not looking forward to in Gran Turismo 7. Um, now, some of these um, are things we don't have enough info about for me to be happy about right now. So consider them to be potential things I'm not looking forward to in Gran Turismo 7 because between now and the release of the game, which is a month from now, uh, we may get more information and it may change. Okay, so with that caveat out of the way, let's start with number one. And it's a biggie, and that is AI. Um, the AI, based on what we've seen and what's been spoken about, or rather the lack of what's been said, does still seem to be lacklustre. Now, I know Kaz has said it's improved and will continue to improve, but that's been said before, um, and up to Gran Turismo Sport, it's still a long way away from what's acceptable in a modern racing title. Um, you know, and a continuation of the Chase the Rabbit events will be a major disappointment, certainly to me anyway. I hope they do put more work in and continue to put work into the AI. It's massively needed. Um, but based on what we've seen so far, um, and I really don't care what the apologists out there say, it's still not good enough. Um, it's, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm not a massive online racer. Offline is a draw for me. And it's one of the things that pushes me away from Gran Turismo Sport. I hope it won't do it for Gran Turismo 7. I'd really like to be proven wrong on this one. Okay, moving over to the second one. And this is interesting because I kind of, I put this one as one of my likes, but there's also something about it that I'm not looking forward to. Um, and that's the weather and time of day. And more specifically, the fact that it is limited. So it has been confirmed that all tracks will have morning to evening time transitions, but only a few will have full 24-hour transitions, those few being tracks where they hold actual 24-hour races. And in a similar vein, all tracks will get sunny to overcast-style weather transitions, but only some will get actual wet weather. It's yet to be specified which will get the full wet treatment, but it's likely to be based on geographic location. Now... I can kind of understand the weather one and geographic location, but I've managed to find evidence that wet weather races have occurred even at places like Willow Springs, which is in a desert. They're rare, but it has happened. So, and when that one did happen, they didn't actually have any wet weather tires, which proved interesting. Um, but that's an aside. So I, I'd much rather see these options available for every track and every layout, regardless of location. And certainly not including them fully, and we don't know whether they will or not yet, but not including them fully for the fantasy track seems even dafter, quite frankly, but there we go. Um, it's also not clear how detailed the weather system will be. We know it's going to have areas where you naturally get puddles and that will build up the rain and the depth and the puddle will get bigger quicker in there and conversely when the rain stops and the sun comes out they'll dry up quicker as well what we don't know is if that's scripted um, or if it's going to be based on a random seed situation and system as used by the likes of live track three which obviously project cars two and automobilista two use um the reason why I'd like it to be that is because those kind of random seed systems add a variability into this just in the same way it does in reality. You know, you don't get the exact same puddle forming exactly the same way every single time it rains. The wind, weather, random factors, the way the rain's flowing, etc., the speed at which it's falling, etc., all of these things will vary that and change that. And adding that bit of variability and just makes it a bit more interesting to my mind. So but it's mainly the limited nature that's I'm, I'm a bit put off by there. Point three is just how much new content are we actually getting? And this for me is a very valid question, um, particularly as, you know, some people are saying content-wise GT7 is closer to 
GTS with just some new features added rather than a significant expansion or a brand new title. Now, I think that's a slightly disingenuous take on it. There's a lot of new stuff coming. But if you limit that argument to just content, well, maybe there's some validity in that. If, first of all, say we look at tracks, we've got one location and four layouts that are yet to be revealed. And we don't know if those four layouts will be at that one track or whether it's just new layouts for existing tracks we haven't heard about yet. Tracks that have been added over Gran Turismo Sport are basically Deep Forest, Trial Mountain, High Speed Ring, and Daytona. Now, while these are revised versions, none of them are new to the GT series which leaves us one location and a maximum of four layouts that might be new to the series or could be another returning track. So from a track point of view, that's uh, it's a bit lightweight in all honesty. Cars do fare better. There's a good number of cars that are new to the series appearing, as well as some old favourites coming back. However, anyone looking for new cars, both new to the series and made since 2020, is probably going to be disappointed. So far we have five, three of which are GT Vision cars. The Genesis Vision Gran Turismo, the Jaguar Vision GTSV, and the Porsche Vision Gran Turismo. In terms of real world cars made since 2020, you have only the Ferrari F8 Tributo and the Civic Type R FK8, both from 2020. Now more may be included as the full car list is revealed, but as it stands, it's understandable why some people are concerned about this. Point four, we then move on to just what has actually changed in terms of physics and force feedback. When the State of Play video threw up a section on physics, I was really eager to see that and pleased to see that. And I wanted to understand what was going to be new. And it was disappointing to me to see that all it really focused on was haptics via the PS5 controller. Now, while I understand the importance of covering this, the fact that nothing else of substance was covered in terms of physics is disappointing. And given the GT series issues with weak areas in the physics model, a little bit concerning for me. Now, I know I tend to bang on about the physics and the force feedback within Gran Turismo quite a lot, but I find the way some of the cars behave counterintuitive when it comes to reality and that for me it, it's just wrong and it doesn't need to be that way you don't need to be the most hardcore sim to have intuitive physics when it comes to a match to reality if i'm going to be blunt drive club was an arcade title but in terms of how the cars reacted in a dumbed down manner it was still intuitive Front wheel drive hot hatches, for example, could be driven on the throttle. You could pull the nose back in on the throttle. If you really threw it into a corner and lifted off, the back end stepped out with lift off oversteer. You know, that's intuitive. If you know how to drive a hot hatch in reality, you could drive it in a dumbed down manner in drive club. You can't translate that to Gran Turismo in some areas. So it was a bit concerning to see that section missed, or rather not really covered in detail. And then finally, we have the PS4, and the question mark around how the PS4 versions will actually run, particularly the base machine. Now, I do want to caveat that with, I fully understand why Sony and PD would put out PS5 footage only for the State of Play event. Okay, showing off GT7 in its best light makes total sense. But it still leaves the question mark in place around the PS4 and the PS4 Pro. As such, it's quite understandable why for many people this is a concern. And I hope that we get a reasonable amount of PS4 and PS4 Pro footage before launch particularly wet weather footage, and I hope that that's a sensible amount of time before launch, not like a couple of days before. Give people a chance to actually see this, judge it for themselves, and make their own mind up. Those are the five things that I'm potentially not looking forward to in Gran Turismo 7. Hopefully, I'm going to be wrong about some of these. I'd like to be. But 
those are my thoughts. If you want to share your thoughts um, down in the comment section, please do. And if you've enjoyed this video, please do hit the like button. And if you want to see more content like this, please do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified when new videos get uploaded. Thanks very much for watching. Take care.